So how we use the mesh, uh, I think Ozia can take that. Yes. Um, so when we initially started the project, um, Dementia was the driving force um, for creating this game. And then um, we kind of looked at the symptoms of dementia and the severity. And did you manage to find all of the fragments? You must have restored a large amount of damaged tissue. They talk about video phones, they talk about installing cable into every home. And there's a brilliant 1972 article about Milton Keynes in the Times where they imagine Mrs. 1990 dialing her shopkeeper on her audiovisual telephone, having her own lightweight electric car for shopping or using her two-way TV. Yeah, so I, th I think one of the most important issues is uh, around the sort of privatisation of public space. And I think when you're aware that you're somewhere where it isn't owned by somebody who's going to have, you know, loads of people just swooping in with uh, security guards or whatever or kind of moving you on, um, you can then treat the urban environment in the same way that you would treat the countryside and that you would feel like you were actually welcome and allowed to be there and sort of hang out. One of the things, one of the places I love most um, is the South Bank, uh, sort of the development of London, uh, the National Theatre, the Festival Hall and all of that. And I think that it's interesting that, that I think the National Theatre have really cleverly managed to sort of slowly um, just increase that feeling that you can just hang out there and it doesn't, you don't have to spend money, you can just you can just enjoy yourself, you can bring friends along, you can just hang out. I think, weirdly, the sort of festival hall end, which used to feel like that, now feels like it's all a bit more monetised. And I think actually it would be really lovely if, if public space in urban environments didn't feel like you always had to spend money to enjoy yourself. You could actually just ha hang out with your friends or go and do something that doesn't cost money because I think living in cities is so expensive and so much is demanded of the all time. I think actually having somewhere where you can put green is really important.
The Utopia in, in architecture is, of course, very easy when you design a, a theater floating on a, on a, on a laguna, no? the wonderful, the masterpiece of Aldo Rossi, which, was, which is intended as the master of urban studies and contextualism, you should think of it. The masterpiece of these guys was a, a floating element which had no context, basically, it was supposed to go, after Venice was supposed to go to Dubrovnik, and it went, and it was supposed to go to San Francisco, and it never went. In the, in the 50s, Cargan publishes a book on Grotius, because he wants to remind the architects what their commitment has to be. Their commitment has to be to society, to build the cities rather than the building, and to build the city according to a political approach. Uh, Andy Warren was uh, expressing what had the, the potential of recycling ideology, recycling history, recycling political into uh, a marketable art device. No? And the Archigram and, and Super Studio were telling us they're very different, no? Because Archigram, they come from, I think, working class areas north of England, super studio they were, in a way, were not politically, I think, officially engaged. Super studio they were all aristocrats, of course, from Florence, Count, noblemen, so they were all communists, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it, that's the typical Italian engagé uh, movement. But they both were looking for something which was at an extreme distance from reality, from realism, just to try to wake up people and to tell them, don't give up to technology and, poli and, and politics, but... And, and 60 is also, of course, the beginning, it's the first time in which workers and students rally together, no? in France, in Les Mets Francaises. And it's interesting that the first physical fight in 1968 uh, with, with one with one of the people injuries in Rome was on the stairs of the architectural school in Valle Giulia. That's it. <laughs> and the physical fight was not between students and police in the beginning, but it was between right wing students and left wing students. But then the police came and made a mess. In Italy, the Progetto Utopia was exactly the, the, the examination of how the complicated relationship between design and, and politics could lead to a um, world of contradictions and complexities. I'm an urban person, I grew up in Rome, I went to school in Rome, and I always felt, felt and I was convinced that being in the city was extremely important for my happiness. But then my life took me around, took me to different regions, different places in Italy where urbanization has a more articulated thing. And right now I, leave, I feel happy when I'm in my house, which happens only on the weekends, and I sit on top of a hill in a medieval little village inhabited by 50 people overlooking the sea. Uh, and finally, I, I got, I, like I became the zeitgeist, I think. I, I don't think that being more or less happy today relies so much on where I am compared to what I was, what, what I thought before. So I think your happiness is a puzzle of things that happens in space and not in space. Uh, that makes very difficult to bring back together the two elements of utopia, the space and, and, the, and the feeling. So we can uh, work with utopia, but we have to understand that sometimes the, the answers to the demands of the person can, of course, can be matched by the architects, but this doesn't necessarily correspond to a formal utopia. So we may, we, yes, I live in... in Paul Shepard said today that this utopia is a state of mind. In that, in that sense, I agree.
problem it's uh, for me doing project in architecture is like selling it's an adventure the, there is a sell and going to the horizon, li horizon line it's an adventure going to doing a project is an adventure you have to negotiate on the, on the way and you want to, as soon as you reach the point you want to go further so this is a kind of utopia in a way, but it's not a utopia because I don't know why I'm invited to speak about utopia because I'm not in utopia. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Utopia. <laughs>